Hi, my name's John Giovannucci. I'm an artist. I live in Quincy, Massachusetts, and I'm going to be the December Artist of the Month at the Quincy um, Crane Library, Thomas Crane Library. I don't have any name for my exhibit, but um, you'll be able to see a lot of inspiration from uh, Earth, like life itself, like fish and um, my childhood snowmen, ancient cultures like South American, African, and um, Aboriginal. And the funny thing is, is I started painting like that way before I realized that my work was like that. And I, I said to myself, well, maybe I'm kind of like, I'm feeling it, you know, like maybe it's spir ancient spirits are going through me as I paint. Because I never thought, I, I never thought I'd be inspired by something I already knew I could do. So it was very interesting. Painting didn't come until later in my life. I used to draw a lot when I was a kid. When I was nine, I used to draw a lot, and um, someone told me I was very good, and that not a lot of kids could do the way I did. You know, I was very, I had my own style, I had my own, my own, it's just a raw natural thing that's been there. Um, art's always been an important part of my life, and um, so I did that for a while. I went through a lot in my life. Um, there were dark times, there were light times, you know, stuff like that. Um, I didn't get back into drawing until I was much older, you know. So I stopped when I was like, I don't know, 14. And then I just stopped doing it because my life was different. I was going through being growing up and hitting puberty and making friends and partying and all that. And then when I was about, I think it was about 22, I started drawing again. And then I discovered painting and I fell in love with it. Um, painting is like, I don't know whether it's just a color, but the colors and the, the emotions. I like a lot of the time I paint, I paint from raw talent, raw, I mean raw emotion. So the painting comes out in the emotion I'm feeling at the time. Like if I'm feeling sad one day, I'll feel like painting something sad but I'll be, I'll be still in the same painting and the next day I'll feel better. So, you know, I'll, I won't paint over it, but I'll add to it, like happiness and anger and all those emotions all into one painting. And you can see each little piece of, you can see a little bit of everything in there. Um, I, the older I've got, I've, I've gotten, um, I've mellowed out on the heavy, thick stuff for a while. And then I was into lighter stuff, like lighter brushwork and stuff. But now I'm getting back into the texture, which I love. I just love the, uh, the texture, this three-dimensional effect, which I love, you know. And you'll be able to see that. I think I'm going to have a couple pieces up there like that. I loved Van Gogh when I was a kid. And my favorite color was yellow. And, I, and after a while, I just, a lot of stuff happened. I mean, there was a lot of dark things. I was ill. and. I started painting a lot of angry stuff. I had lost people that I really loved a lot. Uh, my work was very angry for a while. And now it's just kind of like, just getting better. I'm just getting back to the stuff that makes me feel like I'm getting myself onto the canvas, which is, uh, it's not easy to do. It's like you have an idea in your head, right? And it just sits there for two or three years. And you're like, am I ever going to do this? And one day you just do it, and it either comes out terrible or it comes out better than you thought it would. They say artists have a hole they can't fill, uh, that they're miserable and they have a hole they can't fill. But I, I believe that it's true in a way. Creativity is endless, and you just want more. It's extraordinary how you can just keep thinking of things to create. Like it's like you do one thing and it gives you inspiration to do something else. And your mind just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like, it, like it, your mind just want, you, you just want more. And that's the hole, that's the hole. You can fill it for a while, but it just, you just gotta get more out of it, you know? You can't keep it full. It has to be more and more and more. So it's a big part of my life. It's very special to me. and. Um, I think it keeps me grounded as a person. This is the first piece I did after a very long time of not being creative. Um, I was very ill. Um, I needed to just, 
I needed to do something to get myself back on the ground here. Um, I had lost myself, so I had lost my passion. And I got back into it by just having the guts to buy some tubes of paint and a canvas and just say, I gotta jump in. It's like, it's like going first, swimming for the first time. The only way you're gonna get in there is if you just jump in. And um, I painted it and it came to me so gracefully and it was just so fun. I was, it, I mean, it was thinking about my childhood and how Snowman used to make me happy and the time of, of innocence before things got bad and you know what I mean? Um, it was just, just to get away, you know, just escape. I think I was escaping my, you know, the, the sickness. I was escaping the sickness and it healed me. I mean, it got me back, and it made me just stop worrying about everything. It made me think I was going to be all right. And it just totally healed me. And um, it came out really great, and it's one of my favorites. Um, but I got to be in the right state of mind to do it. Like, that's the kind of painting I got to be in. My mind has to be completely settled. Like, I just have to just have no worries at all. It's one of those things you just do and stop thinking about doing it. And some of my paintings are, they're just based on pure, pure anger or pure um, sadness. Like you go through a blue period like Picasso or something, you know. I actually made that for my girlfriend's mother for her birthday. It was a gift. Um, she wanted a lot of blue. And she wanted green in there too, but she just loved the blue. She told me when I was younger, when, before she passed away, way, way before that, like when I first met her, close to that, maybe in the middle somewhere. Because I've been with my girlfriend for 22 years. So I've known her for long enough for her to be my mother-in-law. Of course, it was a big hit for me when she, got, she, when she finally passed away. Um, but she said I was very good with blues and greens. She used to tell me that all the time. You need to make more blue and green paintings. And uh, she wanted one for her birthday. And I made that for her. And she, of course, she loved it. But, you know, I've made a lot of paintings for everybody that I know. And I think I was a little sad at that point. But you can see that it's kind of turning a bit. Like, it's a little sad, but you can see it's kind of going up to the happier side. I did that, that was the first fish painting I ever did, and I did it recently after I went to the New England Aquarium. And it was like a, I made it for my girlfriend's sister. I gave it to her for her wedding. And of course she loved it, she liked it, and uh, she hung it up, but that was before I started really studying fish. It's kind of just like, I, it was more like a sketch in my head. Like, this is kind of what they look like, but I'm not really ready or prepared to actually do the full amount of work to, you know, get it really done right. Like, I'm not ready to put myself into making the fish more realistic yet, but I just felt like I had to do something. Um, it's very caveman-like, um, but it's actually good for what it is. And I do paint fish now, ocean scenes, and they're, much, they're way, way better now than they were then. But uh, I think I might have been creative in a primitive sense then. I might just be figuring things out. Like I might be just teaching myself more to do things at the time. Like before I taught myself how to do the fish for really good fish, I had to go through a primitive process. I am excited to be having the show at the library. Of course. I mean, all the exposure you can get is the best exposure, right? Um, and you never know who's going to be watching this. So um, it's a great opportunity. Um, I try to, I've try i been trying to get my work out in places. It's not that easy. A lot of people, like, you know, you can't say, oh, can I put my painting in here? It's really hard to get the bravery to go into a restaurant and say, can I put this painting up in your restaurant? 
it's like you really gotta step over another another giant rock to get there but um i do i do i am getting braver about wanting to put my work in places um i have a book too that i've been trying to get out um it's called almost dark and definitely bizarre just i my illustrations and it shows my drawings and then next to it shows the uh the meaning of the drawing what it means to me kind of like a therapeutic kind of thing I'd love it if people got inspired by my art and tried to do their own thing. Um, art is one of those things that it just it heals the world, you know. I think the world would have more peace if there was more art, if the, the, if the arts were supported. And I think everybody should try it because it's very therapeutic and I think it makes the world better. And it doesn't get enough support, especially fine art. It just does not get enough support. and. Um, I mean, I know they always say, oh, Boston supports the arts, but it's always like dancing and, you know, concerts and stuff. It's never like, well, okay, let's support uh, some gallery or something, or someone that wants to open a gallery or artists that want to get their work out there. It, it's, it's out there, but it's not very powerful. I mean, it's not really making a dent. You know, it's hard. It's hard to be an artist, and it's hard to get your work out there. I'd say talent does help, but just be able to just open your mind, you know? Sit down and just sketch around and see if you're any good at it. Get us get a bunch of paint and splash it onto a canvas and see if you can just make it into something, you know? I mean, I, I, I totally want everyone to be inspired by their art, by their, you know, ideas of being an artist. Some people figure out later in their life that they're pretty good at something. I mean, you never know. Please come to the Thomas Crane Library in December and see my work.